Harry the little snail and Dolly the ladybird play with the forest friends in their happy little world. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the little snail always fun games to play, always a brand new tale. Harry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Earache. It was a sunny autumn afternoon and Dolly decided to go and see her friend Berry. I'm going down to the stream to collect pebbles. Do you want to come? But Berry didn't feel like going out to play. I don't know, Dolly. I'm very cold and I've got a headache and my ears really hurt. Oh, Berry, your ears are all red, Dolly said. And you've got a temperature. I'll fly and fetch Dr Owl. The ladybird flew straight to Dr Owl's tree. Dr Owl, you need to come quickly. Berry feels very poorly. Dr Owl quickly packed his doctor's bag, put on his white coat and hurried to see the sickly snail. Hello there, Berry. Let me have a look at you. I need to listen to your chest. So Berry took off his pyjama top and breathed in like the doctor said. Open wide. I need to look at your throat now. I don't want to, Berry snapped. But I have to see if it's red or not, Dr Owl explained and shone a torch down the little snail's throat. And now I'll take a peek inside your ear. This was really too much for Berry. He started to cry and clamped his hands over his ears. Don't be silly, Berry. It won't hurt a bit. And Dolly held Berry's hand to make him feel better. She was right. It didn't hurt a bit. Well, Berry, Dr Owl explained, you've bad earache. You've gone and caught a nasty cold. You need to have a spoonful of this medicine every day. Drink lots of sweet tea and put bags of warm wheat on your ears. Berry's friends came to help him right away. Balthazar brought honey, Flutter bought chamomile flowers and Stanley brought rose hips and they made tea for the patient. Dolly warmed the wheat in a pan and poured it into little cloth bags. Hold these on your ears until they cool down. Berry put the bags on and didn't take them off until they cooled down. Next morning, Dolly found a handful of shiny pebbles on Berry's table. Wow, Berry, lovely pebbles. Who gave you these? I found them down by the stream, Berry said proudly. You went down to the stream? Dolly asked angrily. That was very silly, Berry. You're still not better. You'll get sick again. And Dolly was right. Berry was soon back in bed with a temperature. His little friends came to visit him every day. They read him stories and put on puppet shows. But just as Berry started to get better, Dolly started feeling worse. Now she'd got earache, and this time Berry took care of Dolly. He made her tea and warmed the wheat bags for her ears. Now it was time for Dr Owl to pay Dolly a visit. Gracious me! It seems we have a new patient. I think you must have caught it from Berry. He told Dolly exactly what to do. Then he took another quick look at Berry. You look well enough, but I'll examine you just in case. Everything's fine. You've made a full recovery, little snail. Another few days passed. Dolly did as she was told and took her medicine. She drank plenty of tea and stayed in bed, and she soon felt much better. Dr Owl came to see her one last time and told her she was fine. So now we can go down to the stream together and collect pebbles. Berry was very excited. Hooray, let's all go down to the stream, Dr Owl's three chicks tweeted. Remember to dress up nice and warm. It's cold outside. But there was no need to warn Dolly and Berry. They both wore a scarf, a hat and warm boots. They stayed and played until it got dark and collected a whole bucket full of shiny pebbles. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? 
The Yellow Ladybird. The spring had come at last. Dolly decided it was time to tidy up her flower garden. She got her spade and a rake and tied a pretty dotted scarf around her head. She had only just stepped outside when she heard someone groaning behind her house. Christopher, your wing looks broken, the little ladybird exclaimed. The sun shone in my eyes and I flew straight into a tree. I really hurt myself, the canary said. Just then, Berry the snail and Stanley the stag beetle arrived. Stanley, please go and get Dr. Owl. Christopher's wing's broken, Dolly said, taking control. Dr. Owl soon arrived. Hmm, it looks like a very bad break, he said seriously. Then carefully and slowly he bandaged Christopher's broken wing. You know, Dolly, Christopher said one day, there's a little ladybird living on the island I come from. Really? Is she red with black dots like me? Dolly asked excitedly. And what's her name? She's called Katie. Her back isn't red, it's yellow, but her dots are black like yours. She looks a lot like you. Why don't you come to meet her when my wing's better? That sounds like a super idea. Can Berry come too? Of course he can. There's enough room for both of you on my back. A few days later, Dr. Owl came to visit the injured canary. He was happy to say that Christopher's wing was as good as new. The canary thanked the owl for his help, put Berry and Dolly on his back and headed for his island home. They soon found themselves flying over a large lake with a little island in the middle of the water. Can you see it? We're flying to that island. My nest is on top of the highest tree. Hold on tight, we're coming in to land. Christopher landed perfectly and Berry and Dolly climbed down. You can't catch me, shouted a bright beetle in an orange dress. She was talking to the tiny fleas running after her. Watch out, Dolly shouted, but the girl beetle ran right into her. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to knock you over. My name's Katie. Who are you? <laughs> oh, you're Katie. We're here to see you. My name's Dolly, and I've come a long way to meet my ladybird cousin. Ladybird cousin? Katie asked with a puzzled smile. Yes. You've got black dots just like me, except you're yellow instead of red. Wow, you're right, the yellow ladybird said. Come with me and I'll show you my house, Katie said. As soon as they saw Katie's house, Berry and Dolly started to laugh. My house looks exactly like this, but mine's red. Berry, Dolly and Katie took a long walk around the island. There's the pine forest with the little stream running next to it. We built the bridge ourselves, Katie explained with pride. And what's that in the middle of the meadow? It looks like a slide. That's right. It's a special flower slide. Come with me. I'll show you. Can I have a go? Of course you can. Follow me, Katie said and slid down on the curvy slide. Berry, Dolly and Katie slid down the slide again and again until it started to get dark. It's getting late. Come on, you two, I'll take you home, Christopher said. Dolly and Katie swapped headscarves as a parting present. Have a safe trip home, Katie told them. Do visit me again sometime. It was getting very late by the time Christopher arrived at Dolly's dotty house. The moon shone and the sky was full of sparkling stars. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Board Game It was a lovely spring day and Berry was playing a board game with Flutter. They had to follow a long trail from a mouse to a piece of cheese. The winner is the first one to reach the cheese, the little butterfly girl explained. Berry started the game. He threw the dice and moved his counter. 
Then it was Flutter's turn. She threw the dice and moved. I won! The little snail boy shouted when his counter reached the piece of cheese. OK, you won. Let's play it again. Berry won the second game too. I won. I'm the winner again. The little snail boy shouted with pride. Let's play another game. They started to play the game again. This time, Flutter was the first to reach the piece of cheese. I won, Berry. Now I'm the winner, the little butterfly girl announced with a grin. Berry was so upset that he hid under the pine tree, where he threw the dice so that Flutter couldn't see. I threw a six, but Flutter told him off. That's not fair, Berry. You need to throw the dice where I can see it. No. Throw the dice again, Berry. This time he threw a two. He got left behind and Flutter won that game. That's not fair. I want to win. That's cheating. But, Barry, that's the point of a board game. One player wins and then the other wins. You can't win every time. But I can. I want to win every game, Barry whined. And he was so cross that he threw the board game down on the ground. OK, if that's how you want it, you can play on your own. And she flew away. It'll be better on my own, Berry grumbled. He threw the dice and moved his counter. He threw again and moved his counter. And he won one game after another. But he soon got bored of the game. He tried playing the game with his teddy. But his teddy wasn't a very exciting opponent. Berry eventually set off to look for Flutter again. It was no good on my own, he thought sadly to himself. He found Flutter playing cards with Dolly, Bubble and Balthazar in the meadow. Can I play too? Berry asked shyly. Well, Berry, you can play but you're not guaranteed to win and I wouldn't like you to throw the cards down as well. Flutter eventually shouted after Berry. Barry, you can come and play, but only if you promise not to get cross if you don't win. I promise, Berry agreed and ran to join his pals. They sat playing cards until it got dark. Berry won one game, Flutter won another, and Bubble, Balthazar and Dolly all won one too. Berry was so happy to be playing with his friends that he forgot to get angry when he didn't win. Stanley the Stag Beetle flew by and shouted down to them. Look, I've carved a roasting stick. Come on, let's make a fire and roast apples. They all seemed to like the idea. Eddie the Potato Beetle joined them. They all helped to build a fire, sliced apples up and put them on sticks and roasted them over the glowing embers. The little gang of friends ate up all the apples they cooked. Berry gave his last piece of apple to Flutter. He really wanted to say something nice to the little butterfly girl, but all he eventually said was, Here, this is for you. When all the apples had gone, the friends pushed their sticks into the fire and drew pictures with them in the dark night sky. <laughs>